Simulation Theory, Reality Has Become Science Fiction, Chapter 1, by Jonathan Lithy. Chapter 1, Simulation Theory. We programmed this world so that no one in it could ever learn the truth, and you and Fuller did. Character Jane Fuller in the movie The Thirteenth Floor. What is Simulation Theory? Simulation Theory is a quasi-scientific belief system that states we are voluntary gamers interfaced into a computer-like simulation we call reality. We exist in what can be best compared to a massively multiplayer online role-playing game, MMORPG. The difference is, instead of controlling a character on a monitor with a joystick, we are souls inhabiting a human body controlling its movements with our brain. The evidence to back such claims is the mechanistic ways our universe works as described through physics, mathematics, and other sciences. We currently experience the gaming environment through our five senses. The game environment was once thought to be limited to Earth, but has recently expanded to outer space. Future upgrades and expansion packs promise to include the ability to travel back and forth through time and through other dimensions. The goal of simulation theory is to bring the concept of voluntary existence on video game earth to people in hopes this revelation will cause us all to make life more enjoyable and fulfilling. We are all logged in to the game of life. Another goal is to get the reader to examine his or her belief system and explore new ways of looking at existence. Our current worldview is dated. It is okay for us to update it. It seems like it is a crime to update what we collectively think about our existence. We are allowed to discuss it and change our minds. What is the matrix? The matrix is a term with many meanings. The matrix is a system. The matrix is control. The matrix is a construct. It can refer to the artificial universe we live in. We also use it to refer to a paradigm construct of reality a person or group of people subscribe to. For example, what a person or people believe in. It is the manufactured reality created by the media and perpetrated by society, the social norm, or the status quo. It can also refer to a public network like the internet, and it almost always refers to the supercomputer that calculates every possible variable in existence every moment. In the movie Matrix, it represented control. It represented a simulated reality. It represented a fake world that people believe is real. In mathematics, a matrix is a multidimensional calculation that can be used to calculate complex information. Our reality has tons of information getting calculated by something every moment. How it was designed so perfect is a mystery to me. The design. Like programming a computer, there are a set of rules called laws. These laws can be bent, but cannot be broken. They can be utilized and combined in creative ways so as long as they follow the predefined rules. The basic building blocks are the elements which consist of atoms, subatomic particles, and elementary particles. Different combinations of these elements create more complex molecules, solutions, and all of the physical things we see. Altering the smaller parts of these elements can change the properties, nanotechnology. From these building blocks, all of the physical reality was thus constructed. The laws of motion and properties of matter were governed by another process. The programming language to life is DNA. DNA is the source code which contains instructions that execute the entire makeup of your body, past, present, and future. It is currently unknown if DNA manifests the external events you experience in life or if that is controlled by another function of the matrix. Your DNA code is constantly processing as it carries out the code and dynamically updates its instructions based on external stimuli entering your body's matrix. DNA is now open source and can be modified to give you additional abilities and remove undesired ones. You now have the ability to modify the code and even create new applications, life forms. Tools and techniques. Necessity has been the mother of innovation. 
Mathematics and science are the tools and techniques used to quantify the simulation into a usable and understandable form. Through its use over centuries, civilization has flourished. Animals and other life forms seem to use their own form of math and science. Nature itself is a constant mega calculation. Monoliths and checkpoints. Like the monoliths in the movie 2001 Space Odyssey and video games that have save game checkpoints, our existence has similar checkpoints that enable us to take our gaming experience further and unlock new realms. Christopher Columbus and his crew added the expansion pack of the new world. The Apollo 11 astronauts expanded the gaming environment to the moon. NASA gives us coming attractions of future expansion packs, like Mars, Titan, Europa, and Enceladus. Inventions such as electricity, the telephone, the printing press, the interchangeable part, mass production, computers, the internet, mobile devices, and motor vehicles were tremendous checkpoints that opened up entire new levels of exploration. Submarines and scuba gear allow us to explore underwater. Cracking the human genome, thus making DNA open source and the advancement of nanotechnology, has granted access privileges for everyone to program reality. All of time will be accessible once we get the time travel upgrade. The Simulation Supercomputer The location of the Simulation Supercomputer is unknown. It may not even have a centralized location, like the internet. It also is not a computer like you and I interact with in the year 2007, like a server or a workstation made of metal, silicon, and circuits. We know there is a design and a designer or designers. We can refer to this as what we understand as God, or the Supreme Architect. What is known in limited amounts is what the simulation supercomputer simulates and calculates. The processing power of the SS, simulation supercomputer, is unimaginable. We can't even theorize how many calculations per second the SS is capable of. Its stability is fundamentally protected by the law of conservation of mass, matter cannot be created nor destroyed, and the law of conservation of energy, the total amount of energy remains constant, which guarantees uptime of 100%. The equation always balances itself. What does the SS calculate? It calculates every single variable of every single atom of all that exists every second and projects an output. To get an idea of how many calculations this is, just think of a seemingly stationary object such as a tree. See picture of tree on the following page. There are countless variables affecting this tree and the tree doesn't even move about the planet as humans do. Now multiply the tree by every living thing you know of, every non-living thing you know of, and their change in location through motion, and then do it every single second. The calculations actually happen faster than per second. It is in constant motion, constant update, constant refresh, and providing a constant output. The output is a multiplexed projection of waves, not only in visible light, but in all forms of radiation, including infrared, ultraviolet, radio, microwave, x-ray, etc. If you could see what the universe really looks like, it probably would appear as a bunch of waves. Your eyes take in the data from the external universe and the brain modulates the visible light data into what we call vision. The rest of the data gets filtered out and discarded. The reason why things appear solid and you could run into them is because your relative vibration to them is of similar wavelength. In the movie The Matrix, the green characters going up and down the computer screen were a visual representation of the simulation supercomputer calculating every variable of the matrix. In our case, it would be calculating the entire universe, multiverse, although the matrix is also a description of existence. I once theorized that each dimension of the multiverse had its own simulation supercomputer to do its own calculations based on the laws that govern how reality works for each realm. I thought they interconnected through a common interdimensional networking protocol to merge each dimension when quantum leaps or crossovers took place. I couldn't imagine one simulation supercomputer governing all of the multiverse until I learned of server virtualization. Now I realize the entire multiverse all takes place in the same space through a form of time division multiplexing. 
While each dimension may have its own set of laws, operating systems, they all use the same space. Variables the matrix simulation supercomputer calculates. Location on Earth. Location is unique. Nothing else can occupy that space. Atmospheric factors. Sunlight. Other factors. Quality of soil. Wind. Weather patterns. Birds and squirrels nesting. Was it pruned? Insects. Other plants and trees. Human love or pain. Soil factors. How much bandwidth does my existence take up? Imagine the system that tracks everyone. Imagine the complications of merging domains and forests of user accounts from nations when they merge into trade unions like the EU. The God Domain Forest consists of multi-threads of time, extra-dimensional reality, which then goes into a subcategory of quantum theory and time travel. And then you have the universe reality, which is the physical universe. And this consists of some atomic particles, planets, solar systems, galaxies, and galaxy clusters. And then you have the vibrational frequency reality, which consists of electromagnetic spectrum, string theory, souls, and spiritual realms. Binary versus DNA. A computer uses a two-state system called binary as the machine language source code to cause all things on a computer to happen. While a human user of a computer system experiences graphics, text, and an interactive environment, it is really an illusion of sequences of off and on, zeros and ones. While binary is a two-state system used in digital electronics represented by zero and one, DNA is a four-state system used in living things represented by A, C, T, and G. These are the first letters of the nucleic acids adenine, cytosine, thymine, and guanine. There are actually more depending on your perspective. You can look up how DNA and RNA specifically work on the internet. I'm not an expert. The concept to understand for simulation theory is that DNA is the programming language, source code, operating system of all living things. The genes are individual programs within the DNA and RNA. Genes, genetic information, is passed down through generations for backward compatibility for legacy devices, organs. When legacy devices or applications have been phased out, such as the human appendix, the device is no longer used, but is kept around for a while. Kind of like the ISA slot, floppy drive, serial port. Sequences of the human genome determine your eye color, the diseases you'll get, your height, etc. Genetic mutations are beta tests. Some parts may be fit for the environment, others may not be. Nature does the debugging, and everything remains a continuous work in progress with patches applied each generation. In summary, a computer is programmed by a long series of 0 and 1, and living things are programmed by a series of A, C, T, and G. The Human Pixel Your physical body is a hologram. If you took a picture of yourself and transferred the image to your computer, you would see an image representation of you on the monitor. However, if you started zooming in, you would notice that what used to look like a part of your body starts to become a pixel. You realize the picture that once looked like you is now a series of many pixels that when zoomed out give the illusion of being a recognizable object, in this case yourself. You may say, well, that is the digital image of me on the computer with digital laws. What about me in real life with simulation theory laws? Well, if we looked at you in real life, we would at first see your body as a whole with whatever background was behind you. Then we would zoom in and your body would no longer even resemble itself as it becomes atoms and then subatomic particles and so on until it becomes a vibrational string. The speeds of these atoms rotating create the field you see as bones or skin. But just like a 3D human model in a CAD design, you are an outline of boundaries and points. Instead of pixels and polygons, you have quadrillions of atoms rotating around and around, creating the image we see of a human body. Relative Vibrational Frequency Your relative vibration to other things is what gives you the ability to seemingly walk through or not walk through things. For instance, 
You can walk through water and other liquids, but cannot as easily walk through an iceberg or a brick wall. This is due to the frequency and density of the atoms rotating rapidly or slowly in the liquid and wall with respect to your frequency and density of the atoms that make up your body. Ice and water is the same thing. The frequency of the atoms is what determines its phase or state of being. You could walk through water, but not through ice. It's the same substance. Radio waves can travel through a wall without breaking it. Thus we can conclude traveling through a wall is not impossible. With enough force, you could break through a wall, but you couldn't as easily walk through a wall as you walk through air. Of course, if you left your body, you could go through almost anything. The ability to walk through air may be taken for granted. We just walk through air and don't think of it as a medium. We just accept that air is always there. Air has a set of properties, as all things do, of which are different at various temperatures that allow different particles of matter, frequencies, and other things to travel through it. Air is in constant interaction with itself and all things it touches. All things are in constant interaction. The relative temperature of air to each particle of matter may cause it to change into another phase such as liquid, gas, or solid. You can't get rid of anything. Water will change into ice or vapor gas, but it will always exist. The equation always balances. You could travel through water and water vapor, but not ice. If you build up your speed, this increases your mass. You could probably break through the ice. Water, water vapor, and ice are all the same substance, just in different states. The different states relate to the frequency the atoms are spinning at. Sound requires a medium to travel. The concept here is all about frequencies and vibration. It also hopefully gets you to begin to look at everything in a new way and ponder it all until you are so pondered out, you don't want to ponder anymore. And then ponder that. The more you think, the more you know. The more you know, the more you can have an incredible adventure on Video Game Earth. The Simulation Supercomputer Database. The laws of nature make it possible for all things to be calculated without system slowdown or hangs. Using the object-oriented programming and Microsoft's Active Directory paradigm, we can understand how reality was designed. Each element is stored as a separate object and has its unique values and attributes stored with it defining its properties such as melting point, freezing point, boiling point, scratch value, etc. Mathematical laws govern the results of objects interacting with each other once their values are compared. Each human has a profile that has numerical entries, attributes, and references to external objects for each characteristic of their person and also would belong to various groups that restrict or grant access privileges. An external method object would be movement. An internal value stored in your profile would be the atomical numerical values of the structure of your bones, skin, etc. We can observe the intelligent design through the quantifiable laws of nature and smaller things such as the finite number of movements your skeleton can perform. Because of the well thought out design and precise coding, we can have billions of unique humans all walking around Earth without system slowdown. While there are more than 6 billion humans gaming on Earth, it doesn't require 6 billion separate unique movement programs to simultaneously run to govern the movement of everyone. Everyone has their own unique domain profile entry with permissions and values and the movement method object is applied when movement is desired. In the movie The Matrix Reloaded, the Oracle explains to Neo that there are separate programs that govern everything. While there are billions of user accounts, objects, people, they all use one program, movement.exe, for movement. We all don't move the same because each person has a different atomical makeup and thus the interaction of your atoms with movement.exe give us all unique movements. Animals have different atomical makeups than humans but also use movement.exe for their movement. Object atoms 
plus movement.exe equals movement. The majority of this for the non-IT person probably makes no sense at all. And what's even worse is the IT person is saying, I see what you're trying to say, but your analogies aren't entirely accurate. I don't know how else to explain it all, but we're in a computer system. So here's a diagram to explain movement.exe and how it interacts with all things. So whether you're a human, a fish, a bird, or a snail, and those are all objects, they interact with the program movement.exe. So regardless of species, all accounts run movement.exe. You with your body parts and your atomical makeup and the way that atomical makeup interacts with movement and movement.exe describes and defines how things move. That's what creates the movement. The human robot. This is a neurological simulation. We are all gamers, souls inside of bodies. Body equals computer hardware. Soul equals operating system software. Our experience, that is, of a user or simmer, Jesus died for our sims. We are all simmers. Rules to the game, gravity, thermodynamics, conservation of mass, conservation of energy, chaos and order. Throughout time, we experience the same game, but with updated graphics, levels, and improved gameplay. Go underwater, go to space. Human robot, muscles, skeletal, nervous systems. Man plus machine hybrid equals future. God made man, man made robot. Who should the robots pray to? Man or God? If aliens created man and God created aliens, who should man pray to? The God Domain. The God Domain is the top of the forest that governs all trees and subdomains. It is the Enterprise Administrator. It encompasses everything that can exist, not exist, and maybe exist. Offsite storage. Your memories are not stored locally on Earth in your brain. They are stored offsite. Your brain has shortcut reference links to your offsite storage device. The ancients referred to this place as the Akashic Records. Can you imagine trying to store all of the data in your brain? At night, when you sleep, you upload all of your data. Psychologists who use regression therapy, are computer forensic scientists recovering lost data fragments or restoring data you had once deleted. Dreams and sleeping. Synchronization takes place when you sleep, which can explain REM eye movement. The REM is the data transferring and synchronizing with your offsite host. Experiential data is transferred into the source matrix server dimension. Some memory data is archived or compressed. Upgrade patches are received by user through abstract concepts in dreams. Routine system maintenance and repair takes place. You go through a system defrag and reboot. The body miraculously heals itself. Because your memories are stored off-site and are cached, you can never truly delete them. They can always be recovered. Firmware we all have firmware programmed in. We all have pre-installed background tasks like our heartbeat and breathing and blood circulation and nerve communication involuntarily. Input and output. Do you need me to keep this gag going? You get it, right? Read about the concepts of object-oriented programming, OOP, and do it with the lippy smirk of simulation theory. If you do, it becomes incredibly entertaining, comical, enjoyable, interesting. And you realize we really do have the ability to be godlike creators because we can define all of reality through logic. During REM sleep, memories are transferred to offsite storage in another dimension. Note, the term cloud storage did not exist in 2007 when this book was published. Offsite storage, local user account, memories synchronized. A term you can look up is Akashic Records. Swarm theory. Fish, 
ants, and other creatures communicate and move as a group. They have some sort of ad hoc Wi-Fi mesh network matrix connecting them all and calculating their environment as a group. Real World Super Matrix UPS, United Parcel Service, created software called RoadNet. RoadNet has something called the Super Matrix to calculate the best route a delivery truck can make based on the parameters inputted. Other companies also have their own algorithms and software to do complex calculations. Look up the top 100 supercomputers of the world and see how powerful they are, and then realize what the top secret supercomputers are capable of. Research it on your own. After I conceived the idea for simulation theory and began writing this book, I found out others have done extensive and exhaustive work on the same idea before me, but much better. I didn't get this idea from Nick Bostrom, and you have no idea how many times people ask me if I know who Nick Bostrom is. If you like this topic, look up the following information. On the Wikipedia website, do searches on these topics. Simulated reality. This is well written and thought out, much better than I could have done. Read this entry and explore the hyperlinks. Massively multiplayer online role playing game. The information and links on this article can take you on a great ride. Read it as a description of our reality. Persistent World. There are online video games that are always running, even if you're not logged in. Just like real life. While some are sleeping, others are awake. Others. Augmented Reality. Alternate Reality Game. Artificial Reality. Analogy Vocabulary. Everything about reality can be referred to with technology analogy vocabulary terms because technology is based on reality. In our quest to explain reality to a computer, we discovered how ours works by quantifying everything. Here are some examples. Instinct. That equals firmware. Instincts are built in. Involuntary actions equal background processes. Just like when you hit Control alt delete in Windows and look at the task manager that shows the background processes, your heart beats, you breathe, and your blood flows. Brain equals CPU, eyes, ears, mouth equal input devices. Your friend or confidant is a mirrored hard drive. A good night's sleep is a full backup. A bad night's sleep is an incremental or differential backup. Going to the bathroom is a file dump or output. Make up your own for sexual reproduction and file sharing. Predefined but dynamic. A computer mouse has predefined possible movements on the X and Y axis. The user can choose freely how to move the mouse, but the range of possibilities is predefined. When you make a decision or choice, the matrix adapts to the new set of outcomes possible. All possible outcomes already existed, you choose a particular outcome. Every moment, you are faced with a new set of possible decisions and outcomes. You have the free will to choose, but all of the choices are predefined. Does Johnny go left? Does Johnny go right? Does Johnny do nothing? All are predefined through ranges of outcomes and pulling from the decision outcome database. Draw a flowchart of the decisions you made today. Include the options of choices you could have made but didn't and hypothesize where that could have led. The future is dynamically updating itself constantly based on every decision every person is creating. You don't have free will, but you do? Choosing your life. I was able to conceive simulation theory because I remember choosing my life in the afterlife dimension. I remember where I was before I came to earth in the body that I now possess. Having this memory enabled me to view our existence differently than most people, only because most don't retain this memory, or they are afraid to admit it, or can't understand what their memory means. In the other realm, I was told I would bring a concept to awareness that would change the way humans view the world. If we can all remember that we chose our lives in another dimension and voluntarily came to Earth to participate in a simulation we call life, we would change our approach to living and how we create the world. We will begin to live more fulfilling lives because we'll realize we actually want to be here. We'll see it as a big game, a big vacation, 
We all try to make our experience enjoyable and help each other enjoy it. What do I care about your life or what you think? I believe I was sent here to care and to enlighten mankind with new concepts. Some people think I'm making this up. I'm not kidding around. I remember where I was before I came to earth as a human in his body. I remember waiting to be born while in my mother's womb. I remember being brought home from the hospital for the first time. I remember astral projecting my body as a child. I remember having constant communication with the afterlife dimension as an infant. I remember the day they turned the direct communication with me off. There is so much more to reality that can be accessed, but we've been taught to limit our minds. We may even be consuming food and other things that prohibit our minds from discovering these abilities. I believe other children have this communication until a certain point. Talk to the children and find out what they can tell you about where they were before they came here. You'll find they remember. Ask them, where did you come from? Or where were you before you were here? Or ask them what they think about certain things before they find out what society is taught to think. You'll get some interesting answers. I elaborate on this experience a little more in my previous book, I Remember Choosing My Life in the Afterlife Dimension. Get a copy of it at www.jonathanlippy.com if you're interested. Many people think I'm weird for sharing these memories, but I ask them, do you remember where you're from? And they generally don't have an answer. Maybe they're aliens hiding their identity. I'm not mad at them for not knowing. I'm only reciprocating to them their response of denying my reality and then displaying to them that at least I have knowledge of my origin and they have none of theirs. And how insane is it that none of us know where we come from, what we're doing here, or where we go when we die? Yet we all walk about the earth like we have it together, or we're professionals, or some other facade. Today, go ask someone what their understanding of reality is. You will only get jokes like, life ain't nothing but bitches and money, or die with the most toys, or pre-established religious views. You won't get an individual answer, and you won't get a serious answer. Most people have no explanation of reality, yet nearly all of them absolutely reject the majority of what I present. I marvel at how they have all been conditioned to do this, and when I see the scene in Matrix Reloaded with the architect when every Neo on all of the monitors says, Bullshit! to the architect when the truth of their existence was expressed, the architect responds with, Denial is the most common reaction. They ask me, what evidence do I have to prove my claims? What evidence does anyone have to prove anything? We are all victims of massively orchestrated propaganda, and we feel like a child forced to believe in Santa Claus in order to get Christmas gifts, even though we know it's all a gimmick to get us to behave. I'm good for goodness sake. I don't want chaos. I like order. But what is being exhibited is behavior of a conquered people. Conquered by a hidden hand that controls everything you think and gets you to defend the lie against anyone who has a new idea. But most people would take advantage if they weren't controlled. And those bad apples ruin it for everyone. Life is a big video game. It has all been programmed. If it's programmed, how can we learn how to become creators ourselves? Why are we just the users? Can't we be to the designers? Ask yourself what it is you believe in. Instead of rejecting my ideas, first go there, think about it, and then reject it with something. Don't just reject it right away without thinking about it. Think, question, evaluate, contemplate, and then discriminate. The existence cycle of living things. You live, you die, you go to the before after realm, and get asked if you want to live again. If you choose yes, then you choose a new life. If you choose no, then you enter the afterlife. When you're born, they process you into reality with a birth certificate, a social security number. Your user account has been created. When you die, you have to return your body, and they again process you out of the system with a death certificate. Your user account has been disabled. Realms of existence. Choose your life, life, death, before, after realm. Do you want to live again? It's a decision. If yes, then go back to choose your life. 
If no, then afterlife. It's the flowchart for existence. This concludes chapter one. This is the first time I read this since I republished it in 2009. And uh, my thoughts are, this is pretty good. You know, there's a lot that's changed in computing since 2007 when this initially was written. But overall, I'm pretty happy with it. I enjoyed reading it just now. The part about the, the way I describe the computer system, obviously that's fiction. That's just clever play on words and just thinking things through. The part I am serious about, though, is choosing my life in the afterlife dimension or the other dimension. That part is 100% true. I remember where I was before I came to Earth. They asked me if I wanted to live again. I said yes. Then they showed me a catalog of lives. And the rest of the story is on the internet. Just look up my channel. But that part's the truth. Uh, I do think we're in some kind of an observed reality, like a computer. We could be in like some kind of computer system, but it's not like a computer like you and I think of. It's, you know, something far advanced that we can't see, that we can't even comprehend. But, you know, we go to sleep at night. There are laws of nature, temperature, uh, you know, gravity. Uh, things freeze at the same temperature all the time. They melt. They change shape. They change phases. There's like a lot of rules. And since there's all these natural laws and rules, somebody had to have programmed that. And so I think if we get on that quest to discover who the Supreme Architect is or how this all happened and what we're doing here, like what are we doing here? And that, that conversation should be the everyday conversation. Like, for instance, instead of saying, hey, how you doing? You could say, hi, what's your description of reality? What's your take on existence? Tell me, what do you think all this is? And uh, some people will give you an answer. Other, most people will probably laugh it off or just not want to have the conversation. But why? Why Why do people not want to discuss what is reality? That's pretty important to me. It should be important to everybody else. After all, you're living in reality. You and I live in what we call reality. Now, how real reality is? Well, that's another story. Or it's actually this story. Simulation theory. But... Seriously, for what I mean about the laws, the laws of nature always consistently work. They don't just arbitrarily work. They don't randomly work. They always work. There's like a program that governs their behavior. I've, I've been trying to have this conversation with people forever. Nobody will have this conversation. They don't want to talk about what is reality. And yet... They all deny, they're, they're quick to deny and quick to be a skeptic. But I, I just want to know, like, what do people think they're doing? Like, what goes on in their mind? What do they think about? You're here. You're here in, in this world. You're here. Does everybody got it figured out and just nobody let me in on what's going on? Like, sometimes I wonder that. Like, am I Truman in the Truman Show that no one is allowed to tell me that I'm on some game show? Because I can't have this conversation. I try. And people refuse to have the conversation. The concept of persistent worlds, I thought that was pretty deep. You should look that one up on Wikipedia, persistent worlds, and apply simulation theory to it. I think more and more people are starting to ask questions, though. You know, the Matrix movie really woke up a lot of people. And a lot of other movies coming out that are daring us to question our reality. And a lot of articles you read about computer systems or even science fiction, try to like see it in a literal perspective just to see if it applies, you know, like metaphorically or allegorical, you know, see if you could apply it to your life to answer some of the questions you have. But anyway, that's it. That, that's chapter one. I hope you enjoyed it. If not, that's cool too. Uh, if you want to leave any comments, feel free. You know, the first edition came out nine years ago, so it's not like you're going to hurt my feelings. I'm a big 37-year-old. I can handle it. If you like it, if you like it, you know, let me know the parts you liked about it. And I hope maybe, I hope it at least sparked the questioning for you. You know, you don't have to take any of this literally, but I hope it it's training you to think differently and look at things differently and apply questions. Question 
reality, question everything. That is what a philosopher does. He questions everything and tries to find a piece of truth out of it. And I've said it before, I'll say it again, I do know of Nick Bostrom and I do know of Joe Rogan. I've seen their things and uh, though they didn't beat me to it, with Nick Bostrom it happened at the same time and Joe Rogan, I just hope he read my book and then talked about it on his show. The quote at the beginning of the chapter is from 13th Floor, which is really what inspired me to write Simulation Theory. It's what triggered my mind to start thinking what I already thought, but like put it into a better, uh, help, help formulate it. That movie is great, 13th Floor. It's not talked about much, but it's, it's a tremendous movie for my life. It came out the same time The Matrix came out. The Matrix got all the attention, but 13th Floor had a few scenes like the one I quoted there where I was like, whoa. Nobody's supposed to be able to figure it out, but somehow you figured it out. And we've been watching you. And uh, so, yeah, 13th Floor and The Matrix, those two films, holy smokes, man. I'm always on the hunt for movies that say that reality isn't real. I'm going to put a link in the description below. I, a couple years ago, I was collecting all the movies that are about that, and I put them all on a, a website. I haven't updated it for like three years, but... You can check it out. Check the links in the description below. And if you want to own a physical copy of the book, there are links in the description below. Thank you for watching. I'll see you in chapter two.